The June jobs report showing another sign of the U.S. job market continuing to cool. The unemployment rate unexpectedly rising to the highest reading in almost three years, while June's job additions saw a slight decline from May. PNC Financial Services Group Chief Economist Gus Fauché joining us now to discuss. Gus, it's always good to see you. So you look at this report, Gus. Uh, headline payroll growth of 206000 did see Gus Dower revisions uh, mentioned an unemployment rate ticking up to 4.1%. So some, some puts and takes here, but Gus, uh, break it down for us. How, how did you read this report? I read this report as being very positive. The job market continues to improve, but the pace of job growth is slowing towards a more sustainable pace over the longer run. Uh, we saw slower wage growth, which is reducing inflationary pressures from the labor market. Uh, but at the same time, wages are increasing more quickly than inflation, so household incomes are going up and the economy should continue to expand. So I think if you're at the Fed, this is what you want to see, slower job growth, a little bit higher unemployment rates, slower wage growth, and that would support cuts in the Fed funds rate sometime later this year. And do you think with a higher unemployment rate, there's something called the SOM rule, and we don't need to get into the nitty gritty, but you think if the unemployment rate kind of holds here around 4.1, 4.2%, that actually gives the Fed a lot of cover to lower interest rates as it has been telegraphing it wants to do? Uh, that's right. I mean, it's an indication that there is a bit more slack in the labor market. Uh, what they don't want to do is wait too long to cut because that increases the likelihood that we get a recession, not necessarily this year, but let's say in mid-2025. I think they do want to cut because they're concerned that monetary policy is weighing on the economy. Uh, so this type of jobs report gives them the ability to do that. They can say, look, inflation is slowing. The labor market is cooling a bit. Therefore, we should be cutting rates sometime later this year. And Gus, when would you be looking for in terms of later this year? Are, are you in the September camp? I'm more in the November camp because I think they'd like to get past the election. Uh, I think if they cut in September, then that opens them up to political criticism. So I think November looks more likely. And I don't think it makes a big deal for the economy one way or the other. Uh, that being said, if we do see the job growth is slowing a little more than we're expecting, then we might get that September cut. But I think, you know, right now, November, but September is still in play. You know, uh, time flies by here. In a week, we got the big bank earnings. Just wondering, uh, you see anything in the data here uh, that maybe we should be concerned about the consumer? Is the consumer still strong? I think the consumer is still holding up. Uh, as I said, real incomes continue to rise. Uh, when we look at things like debt service ratio, those are still pretty low. Uh, obviously, travel has been incredibly strong this summer. Uh, and so there's no indication to me that there are significant problems for the consumer. I think there are some low income consumers who are a little bit stretched. Uh, but we also have for high income consumers, we have rising stock prices, rising household wealth that's supporting spending. And we have seen the savings rate tick up a little bit, which is what consumers are going to need to do over the longer run, save a little bit more. So I think that they're still overall in good shape, uh, perhaps with a little bit of, of concern for, for lower income consumers in particular. Uh, Gus, and, and next week, of course, CPI is on deck. I'm curious, what are you looking for there, Gus? And how important is that? Is that print to the Fed? Uh, so 0.1% on the overall CPI. We did see gasoline prices fall uh, from May to June, particularly given that seasonally we would expect them to increase. Uh, we expect to see the core at 0.2% increase from, from May to June. Again, that's good news from the Fed's perspective. After some uh, less progress in slowing in inflation in early 2024, we're starting to see inflation slow a bit more. That being said, it takes more than one or two months for the Fed to be convinced that inflation is slowing. But I think we will get better numbers on inflation over the next couple of months, and then that supports a rate cut later this year sometime. Gus, always good to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.